The famed actor and stuntman Ryan Dunn is dead today after a fiery crash in a suburb of Philadelphia. He Prankster and stuntman Ryan Dunn became famous as a member of Johnny Knoxville's Daredevil crew in the popular American hit TV series, Jackass. Danger was no stranger to him, and he earned a substantial income showing daring and risky stunts and pranks on camera. At its peak, the TV series Jackass had a loyal following of millions. Ryan was born in Medina, Ohio, but grew up in Williamsville, New York. As he entered his teenage years, he tried narcotics with his friends. What began as a bit of fun soon turned into a dangerous addiction, and his parents intervened. In an attempt to address their son's habit, they moved to Westchester, Pennsylvania with Ryan. And that's where he met Bam Margera on their very first day of high school. The pair hit it off straight away, both admiring each other's skateboarding tricks and lust for thrill-seeking adventure. Together, they founded the CKY crew, in which they filmed themselves performing stunts, tricks, and pranks, often using skateboards. This self-filmed footage was then sold in the underground skate marketing scene. One day, Ryan and Bam were spotted by Johnny Knoxville because of their performances with the CKY crew. This eventually led to a deal with MTV. Along with Johnny Knoxville and six other members, Ryan and Bam formed the main cast of Jackass. The CKY crew was an important precursor to Jackass and provided much of the inspiration for the later TV show and movies. The CKY crew included not only Ryan Dunn and Bam Margera, but also other members such as Jess Margera, Chris Rabb, known as Rabb himself, and Ray Yon. Ryan had worked in various industries, as a welder and at gas stations to earn a living, but when Johnny Knoxville recruited him for his new TV show, Ryan's life changed forever. Ryan Dunn played an important role in the creation of the show Jackass. Jackass consisted of nine friends who were once described as a bunch of knuckleheads who had a very high tolerance for stupidity and pain. The program was created by Jeff Tremaine, Johnny Knoxville, and Spike Jones. The main cast members of Jackass were Johnny Knoxville, Steve-O, Bam Margera, Ryan Dunn, Chris Pontius, Jason Wee Manacuna, Preston Lacey, Dave England, and Aaron McGeehee. The first episode was broadcast on October 1st, 2000, and by the second episode, MTV got the highest ratings ever on Sundays. An audience of 2.4 million watched as the friends tortured and teased each other in a series of bizarre and daring challenges. Although Jackass provided entertainment to a growing number of fans, it was not without controversy. Despite the disclaimers and warnings displayed before, during, and after each show, Many young people lost their lives or were seriously injured when they tried to imitate Johnny Knoxville and his crew. The intense attention given to the TV series led to multiple restrictions from MTV. Conflicts arose between the Jackass team and MTV over which stunts could or could not be aired, eventually straining their relationship. As a tribute to their devoted fans, Johnny Knoxville and the Jackass team decided to create Jackass the Movie as an extension of their popular MTV series. It was released on October 25, 2002. Jackass the movie achieved remarkable success, reaching number one in its opening weekend. This success led to the production of several sequels, including Jackass No. 2 in 2006, Jackass 3D in 2010, Jackass 3.5 in 2011, Jackass Presents, Bad Grandpa in 2013, and Jackass Forever in 2022. Ryan's most memorable moments from the film were his poo dive, in which he snorkeled through sewage, and the office chair stunt, in which he rode down a skate track and being pulled along on a plastic sled by a four-wheeler through a cornfield. An x-ray of his rear end was also a hit that made it onto merchandise such as t-shirts. After inserting a toy car into his rectum, Ryan visited the emergency department describing a pain in his backside. The x-ray taken by the doctors revealed the toy car positioned there, and he underwent surgery to get it removed. At first, the team behind Jackass was reluctant to make a second film, feeling that the first film was a fitting end to their career in slapstick comedy. But due to the appeal of the paycheck and the high demand from fans, they were convinced to make a second film anyway. This second film aired four years after the release of the first film. In its debut weekend, the second film achieved the highest box office success, grossing just over $29 million. But when the film was broadcast, fans were satisfied and they were getting new ones. Ryan was in a dark period. 
He had been injured during filming and had separated himself from the rest of the crew. During a stunt, he and Bam Margera got their feet tied to a horse. As the horse galloped away, the two men were thrown to the ground and pulled after the animal. Ryan landed on his shoulder and suffered a serious and painful injury. Following the incident, Ryan developed a blood clot which proved life-threatening as it was positioned so closely to his heart and brain. Whilst receiving treatment for that, Ryan was diagnosed with Lyme disease. It was a double blow for the young entertainer. Whilst he received successful treatment for both conditions, he became depressed. He refused to talk with any of his jackass friends for more than two years. The crew carried on without him, but the lure of the tight friendship and the laughs they had together eventually persuaded Ryan to get back in touch. In retrospect, it seemed that the break from work had done him good. When he finally felt ready to contact the jackass team again, he was back to his old self. Having missed the films and TV shows the team had produced during his absence, he was back in full force for the third film. It was this daredevil lifestyle and aptitude for performing skateboarding tricks and stunts that had sealed Ryan's position in the Jackass franchise. While he exhibited daring and sometimes foolish behavior in front of the camera, explained his fellow players that Ryan was often the voice of reason behind the scenes. He would actively challenge his fellow Jackass members who were consistently attempting to outdo each other with increasingly risky stunts. But when it came to cars, Ryan never had any voice of reason. He was besotted with fast cars and had some serious accidents in them. He had participated in the Gumball 3000 Motor Rally multiple times. This rally is a 3000 mile annual event which takes place on public roads. Its route changes each year and can take place in multiple countries. Ryan Dunn was known to be a reckless driver and this was no secret to his friends and family. Although he was considered a competent driver, he repeatedly ignored traffic rules and often exceeded the speed limit. During a 13-year period prior to the tragic accident, authorities had fined him no less than 23 times for various traffic violations. These violations were all related to his driving and included situations where he drove despite a driving ban, repeated speeding, as well as some instances where he was behind the wheel under the influence. Ryan had once been involved in a serious car accident in which he overturned a car eight times. His best friend Bam Margera was also in the car at that time. He flipped me in a car eight times at the same exact spot in 1996, Margera revealed. Thank God I had my seatbelt on, because Chris Rabb put one on me, but my brother didn't have one on. He flew 40 feet. Thank God he's alive. But like, Dunn was always a maniac at driving. Remarkably, this accident occurred near the location of the fatal accident that would take his life 15 years later. During the moments just before the accident, Bam Margera's brother managed to put a seatbelt on Bam while Ryan was driving at a speed of over 100 miles per hour. Unfortunately, Ryan was unable to secure himself with a seatbelt and was thrown from the vehicle. Fortunately, he survived this shocking incident, suffering only a broken arm. Despite the fact that Ryan Dunn was able to recount the car accident in which he was involved, neither his previous speeding violations nor the accident itself seemed to discourage him from getting behind the wheel again and reducing his reckless behavior. His friends and family were very concerned about his driving and feared that one day he would be involved in another serious accident. In particular, April Margera, the mother of his best friend Bam, had repeatedly told Ryan to drive more carefully and slowly. April and her husband considered Ryan a son because he and Bam had been inseparable since childhood. But Ryan didn't listen. In 2011, he was at his prime. The previous five years had all been filled with success. Ryan was really making a name for himself in the television and film industry. In one year, he successfully landed three acting jobs, produced his own movie, Living Will, and co-hosted a popular TV show without his jackass sidekicks. It seemed he was going his own way and starting a successful career for himself. This was the change he needed. Ryan had gone through hard times and had recovered from this. This was the reward for all his hard work. But unfortunately, in June 2011, fate would strike and bring all his hard work to a painful and devastating end. It was Sunday night, June 19th, and Ryan was going out with some friends. They met around 10 p.m. at Barnaby's of America in Westchester, Pennsylvania. 
Ryan drove to the location in his car, a 2007 Porsche 911 GT3. As the hours passed and the alcohol flowed, the laughter and chatter got louder and louder. Ryan drank two beers and took shots with his group of friends. At the age of 34, he seemed happy and content. His life was going well. He was in a stable relationship with his steady girlfriend, Angie Kuturek, and his career was going in the right direction. He posted a photo of himself at the bar with his friends on social media. Afterwards, this turned out to be the last photo ever taken of him. Among those at the bar was 30-year-old Zachary Hartwell. Zachary had collaborated on the production of Jackass and was a longtime friend of Ryan. He also had a role as a stunt driver in Bam Margera's 2009 film, Ming Hags. Zachary was a former member of the U.S. Navy who had served three deployments in Iraq. He had married his high school sweetheart, Rachel, less than a year before the tragic accident. On that fateful night, Zachary and Ryan were celebrating a new deal they had landed. Ryan bought two beers and six shots of booze for himself at the bar before going to one of the back tables. There, a friend bought two more shots for him. Despite this alcohol consumption, many witnesses, including the bar manager, testified that they did not consider Ryan to be visibly intoxicated at the time. This information was supported by surveillance video footage, but the alcohol undoubtedly had an effect on him. It affected his decision-making when he made the worst decision of his life, to get behind the wheel of his Porsche 911 and drive his friend home. Ryan sent a text message to his best friend, Bam, telling him, Stopping for a beer? Be there when I can. That was the last message he would ever send Bam. On Monday night, June 20th, 2011, around 2.20 a.m., four hours after arriving at the bar and several drinks later, Ryan got into his car. His friend Zachary Hartwell climbed into the passenger seat next to him. They turned onto Route 322 and Ryan pushed the pedal to the floor. The car raced across the open road, reaching speeds of about 130 and 140 miles per hour. This was typical of Ryan's driving style. He never drove slowly. He always drove at pace. But this time, he had a significant amount of alcohol in his body. Before heading to his home in West Goshen, Ryan drove towards Pottstown to drop Zachary off. He lived just 100 yards from the exit ramp on Route 322 at the Pottstown turnoff. Just as Ryan approached the exit, still traveling at 130 miles per hour in a 50 miles per hour zone, he suddenly lost control of the vehicle. No one knows exactly what happened at the time, but the car went off the road. At a high speed of up to 140 miles per hour, there was no time to stop or regain control of the vehicle. The Porsche collided with the guardrail, smashed through it, and drove at high speed through the surrounding trees. About 40 meters later, the car collided with a tree at 132 miles per hour. The collision caused a fireball to shoot into the air. The fireball was seen from the road, and emergency services were called to the scene. Okay, calls on the east. The accident's going to be on 322 bypass at Pottstown Pike. Vehicles on fire. I've upgraded the assignment. One of the police chiefs who responded to the incident was West Goshen Police Chief Michael Carroll. He stated that the wreckage was frightening. In his career, he had dealt with hundreds of traffic accidents, many of them fatal, but this was the worst he had ever seen. Even without the fire, the condition of the car was an absolute mess. The car had been torn apart into multiple twisted and blackened pieces. The make could only be identified by a door that had been torn off during the collision and escaped the fire. On the road, a 100-foot tire skid mark was visible, possibly where Ryan had braked or swerved. The two occupants were unidentifiable due to the severity of the crash. It was challenging to determine whether the two men had succumbed to the impact of the crash or the subsequent fire. Ryan had to be identified by his tattoos and hair. The coroner's report indicated that the occupants had died from a combination of blunt trauma and thermal trauma. On the evening of the incident, Johnny Knoxville, a close friend and fellow Jackass team member, posted the following Twitter message. Today I lost my brother, Ryan Dunn. My heart goes out to his family and his beloved Angie. R.I.P. Ryan, I love you, buddy. MTV also came out with a statement. We are devastated by the tragic loss of Ryan Dunn, a beloved member of the MTV family for more than a decade. He made us all laugh, 
and had the tireless, enthusiastic approach to life of your favorite middle school friend. Our thoughts and deepest condolences are with Ryan's family and friends. The Jackass Brotherhood will never be the same. It soon became public that Ryan had been at the bar before driving that night. Soon there were accusations on social media that he had been driving under the influence. It was a terrible time for his and Zachary's friends and family, not knowing what had caused the accident. It wasn't until weeks later that a toxicology report revealed that Ryan had a blood alcohol concentration of 0.196, which was more than twice the legal limit of 0.08 in Pennsylvania. Friends who knew Ryan and those who had been with him at the bar that night were shocked at the toxicology report. Some of his friends claimed that he wasn't a big drinker and he didn't appear intoxicated at the bar. It was not the first time Ryan drove under the influence of alcohol. In 2005, Ryan was caught driving under the influence by police, which put him in a probation program for his first offense. This program offered him the opportunity to have his criminal record expunged if he behaved properly. In addition, he received a 12-month driving ban for this offense. But despite this warning and the relatively mild consequences, Ryan still drove under the influence of alcohol again, which ultimately had catastrophic consequences. After the tragic passing of Ryan Dunn on June 20, 2011, a private memorial service was organized to honor him. The service took place in Westchester, Pennsylvania and lasted for more than four hours. It was attended by Ryan Dunn's family and close friends, including fellow Jackass cast members like Bam Margera and Johnny Knoxville. The memorial was described as a celebration of Dunn's life. Additionally, a tribute video was played at the memorial as a way to remember and pay respects to the late Jackass star. Ryan's private funeral took place in his home state of Ohio, and it was attended by family and friends. Zachary Hartwell's funeral was held as part of a private memorial service on Saturday, June 25, 2011, at the Smith & Boyd Funeral Home in Westchester, Pennsylvania. The service was attended by friends and family. In August 2012, Zachary Hartwell's parents filed a lawsuit against Ryan Dunn's estate. They claimed that Barnaby's Westchester was negligent in serving Ryan Dunn, given his visibly inebriated state at the time of the incident. In addition, they alleged that Ryan acted recklessly and negligently by operating a vehicle while under the influence of alcohol, with an emphasis on driving at dangerously high speeds. They demanded unspecified damages, citing the great loss they had suffered, including their son's guidance and companionship. In addition, they also demanded that Ryan's estate pay costs related to Zachary's death, such as funeral expenses. Further, Zachary's parents filed a claim on behalf of their son's estate, arguing that both Ryan and the bar should be held responsible for the pre-impact anguish, pain, and suffering Zach had endured leading up to his tragic death. In addition, they wanted compensation for the wages Zachary allegedly earned during his lifetime. Ultimately, the lawsuit between Ryan Dunn's family members and Zachary Hartwell's parents ended with a settlement. The outcome was not publicly announced. The loss of Ryan Dunn was a devastating shock to everyone who knew him, especially his best friend Bam. Visiting the crash site the day after the accident, Bam broke down in tears. He had been in Arizona when he received what he described as the worst phone call of his life. The loss of his friend and co-star nearly tore him apart, leading him to heavy drinking. He had faced issues with alcohol in the past, but the loss of the person he considered a brother significantly exacerbated his struggles with alcohol abuse. Over the next decade, he experienced a series of challenges, including multiple stints in rehab for alcohol misuse, legal troubles that resulted in arrests following altercations with the public, the breakdown of his marriage, the loss of custody of his son, and strained relationships with his family members. His relationship with the Jackass crew deteriorated, ultimately resulting in his dismissal from the team. The rift stemmed from his struggles with substance abuse, and he notably challenged Johnny Knoxville to a bare-knuckle fight. This period appeared to be marked not only by the loss of a close friend, but also by a loss of control, as he lashed out at those who cared. Although Ryan Dunn had tragically passed away in a car accident at the age of 34, he had lived his life to the fullest. He had successfully turned his daredevil stunts into a source of income and gained popularity both on and off screen. 
Those who had the privilege of knowing him remember Ryan as a funny, loving, and caring young man with an infectious enthusiasm for life. Thanks for watching this story. Don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on your notification bell to stay updated on more similar videos. We would love to hear your thoughts, so feel free to share your comments below. Until next time.